years. Um, I have a bunch of shows in development. I do short films. Um, I got into virtual production at the very beginning. And then um, when COVID hit, um, I didn't really travel to it. And then as it came out of it, um, people started sending me visual effects projects that there were problems with. So that's kind of the way that I got into. Um, started in post fixing the problems. Then I decided to go on the front end and uh, help them fix it. So this is a young me at uh, Digital Domain. Um, and this is the crew of Titanic, which was my second big movie. Um, the first one was uh, uh, The Fifth Element. So most of these guys are Academy Award winners now. Um, but that was the um, ship. And there was some of the core team. This is one of my big shots that I did. But this was um, Arite Water, which is a French company. This was a 100-foot model. Um, the technology changed a lot. Um, this would all be in CG. I spent six months built a visual effects and uh, virtual production academy um, in Beijing. Um, so I also worked on The Revenant, and I was the um, dailies colorist um, on it. So I was working directly with Chivo um, and everybody. So, you know, basically, it, color is about an emotion. This was the color palette we came up with. Um, the evolution of color, a lot of history, a lot of color theory, and a lot of um, uh, visual storytelling, you know, basically about it. The importance of color, you know, it does, um, it does, uh, you need to use it in the visual narrative. Um, color portrays an emotion, um, and there's always a, aesthetic that the production designer has given to the um, director of photography that, um, you know, has, you know, goes through, um, you know, the whole process. So it's all about pipeline, basically. There's um, various stages, pre-production, um, integration, and yeah. File formats, open EXR um, is one of the most important things. Always work uh, uh, 10 bit and above. Um, use charts on set. Make sure there's consistency in all the displays. Um, uh, that'll prevent color errors and, um, and that'll cut challenge, challenges and costs. So like I said, when I got into it, people came to me because they had problems and they looked to me to fix it. And that's basically what I did, have done all my life. Um, the importance of uh, the display um, tools is that um, the CG artists, it should look the same on their desk as it does on the desk at the volume. The volume's gonna be completely different. It's a completely different um, display technology. So here's a couple things. There's um, virtual production tools at the front. There's the whole new, um, kind of uh, job system that came out. Um, there's Unreal Engine, there's Scratch Live that's integrated into it. And now this is um, kind of the new um, hierarchy. And um, I kind of fit someone somewhere in here and sometimes fill in as the uh, virtual production supervisor. So uh, what I'm gonna uh, talk about mostly is ACES. ACES is the academy um, format for doing um, uh, color pipelines. It's something that everybody understands. It's accepted and documented. So it's, it's really a good thing to kind of follow that. Some of the things that are gonna be coming, um, we all know uh, AI is, um, was a big thing. Um, I mean, Hollywood shut down. Um, over it for the last year. So that's been kind of a big deal. And in the path of that, a lot of volumes and companies um, had staffed up, uh, stuck millions of dollars into the volumes, and then um, shut down. So a lot of the places that I went in and consulted sometimes only lasted a year. And it was just really kind of, you know, a, a little sad. Things are coming back now. 
there's a uh, strike, another strike uh, that's coming, which is sad. Um, exposure is critical. Um, the DP and the uh, uh, lighting guys really need to um, light the volume um, with not having lights on the screen, um, not having hard lights. Everything should be soft. Um, the foreground and the background should match. That's one of the things I'm gonna talk about is how you uh, calibrate the volume uh, to match the, um, the camera. And um, the color chart should look good and um, it should just look great. Um, here's you know, some, of the, um, some of the drawbacks of it. Um, is uh, always use uh, more than 10 bits um, and always shoot in log. Don't shoot in Rec. 709. Some of the issues that can be caused, uh, caused by lighting, um, make sure you flag your lights, make sure you uh, get rid of the reflections. And if um, I can send you this PowerPoint, I'll give you contact information at the end. Um, Paul DeBevick gives a really great description of, uh, um, of what you shouldn't do. He also tells you um, a little bit on how to fix it in pre. You know, you go through and that's what you do on your stuff. But there's so many new um, positions. Um, you need powerful machines. Motion tracking is one of the things that um, is uh, sometimes slow. If the tracking goes bad, sometimes it takes two hours to fix. Um, so some of the people I've been talking to, you know, are talking about um, using Rec. 709, and I think um, Rec. 2020 is really the way to do it now, and um, and really works a lot better. Um, here's one of the things that's new. The pyramids were really great. Um, so those VFX guys are now moving down to the front end. So I, this is a good example. You know, they were talking about, you know, building the set and things like that. So in this case, the volume's in the back and they built a practical set. This is a really good application for it. So, this is one of the big drawbacks, Moray. The way to um, combat that is to use short depth of field lenses. Um, this, the example, if it's out of focus a little bit and soft, then the, the Moray won't show up. Um, pixel um, pitch. Um, the tighter the pixel pitch, the less issues you're gonna have. Technology is getting better, uh, the volumes are getting cheaper, um, but it's very important to um, you know, make sure you do um, what you can with it, but that's all gonna be up to the facility, not up to you. Okay, here's the, here's the meat of the matter. Um, here's a description of ACEs, a little bit about how it's relevance and the importance of the, um, of the color imaging. Now here's where we get tricky. What is it, alt tab? Oh. Oh, look at that. Like it. Um, so I, I have some of these pages here, and like I said, the, uh, of course, look at that. Uh, up, back. You were a lot better with having those embedded links in there. But like I did a, a whole master class yesterday and I think I had 145 slides. I completely redid the whole thing last night. And, uh, oh, there we go. Great. Doesn't show up here. Okay, so this is this is really um, you know why you should use Aces. 
Um, it's the yellow space. It's a much larger um, uh, color space. Um, you know, it goes, um, you know, above and beyond. Um, and if you look at the HD Rec 709 space, obviously this is much better than that. Um, so that uh, should be carried through um, the entire process. Oh, the old trackpad, you're right, this trackpad is kind of rough. I'm not gonna do this again. <laughs> Okay, here's what I wanted to um, kind of get to. The CCT is the um, camera transform. Um, sometimes they roll it off a little bit. Um, people get stuck with the full range and the legal range. Um, so that's always important to, um, to do. So this is the working space that you wanna use um, when you're in uh, Unreal. You wanna use ACES CG. Um, it's just something that all the visual effects houses understand, all the um, artists understand, and it's a good um, thing for multiple artists. Um, and there's some other documentation from, uh, from Unreal that I'll show you in a little bit. I'm still over there. Yeah, ACES proxy you know, is another one that I avoid it. Um, because it has the whole full range um, video legal thing um, that is just, I don't know why they even invented it like that. Okay, how do I go? Let me try arrow. There we go, I broke it. Who is the keys to advance? Yep, you can. The arrow? Yep, uh, left and right. No, not in the really did break it. There we go. Okay. Um, you want to use ACES compatible software. Um, you know, you start with Unreal in the beginning. Um, you know, you might have some of the other previous packages, um, but it's important that the colors display and that everything, um, you know, looks good and looks the same. So that's one of the reasons that we use um, color calibration. Um, there's a lot of new tools uh, to do it. I'm going to show you a little bit what. Sony and Airy um, are doing for the displays. Um, but it's also important that the artist volumes, uh, that the artist's workstations are calibrated, and that the colors that um, you show to the production designer on your initial designs and things like that, that it starts um, from, that end, uh, from that end of it. Okay, this is um, more of the meat of the matter and, and some of the stuff that I um, that I just came upon. Um, so this is a document that um, Unreal came out with, and it's really good. Um, Alt-Tab. Oh, right. You can see I've been on the farm too long. Used to talking to my uh, goats instead of people. Oh, there we go. So um, this is the uh, Epic Games um, document that's really great. Goes through, talks um, all about the um, using Brompton um, for which Brompton is the processor computer with Unreal feeds into the Brompton processor, which is the very first um, part of it. So you're working in the Aces CG color space. Ugh. Okay. Okay, so here's the real key of it. Um, 
the working color space of um, Unreal Engine, um, they, a lot of times they'll say, uh, you know, like, you know, Rec 709, but um, what I said, you know, Aces CG is used by most of the uh, visual effects studio. But the important thing is, is to work linear. Everything's linear in the process. Um, so the only thing that's in log uh, are the cameras. Yeah, I think we should get a mouse for everybody for the, uh, okay. So there's a lot of working groups that are working on it. The uh, OCIO uh, reference color space um, is something that's very important in the um, Unreal Engine workflow. How many people run uh, Unreal or know how to run it? Half, very good. Um, so have you guys had color space issues getting out of Unreal and, and things like that. Yeah. Um, so if you go and use this document, it, it at least is something to you know, help you a little bit. It's, like, it's very detailed and something that I couldn't fit into um, slides, but if you have a question on it, it's definitely uh, something that will help you a lot. So one of the things that had kind of been missing is the relationship of how the uh, camera captures the screen. So um, uh, you'll want to use a, um, a R RGB Macbeth chart um, to shoot that. And with that, um, you can uh, use the Sony and the Airy software to go in and actually um, match the scene and what the software will do is um, set the, uh, it'll talk to the camera and it'll actually um, set up the camera uh, properly for you so that the color chart looks good. So the very first thing you do is you have the guys calibrate the volume. Um, set up the Brompton processors, um, go and shoot the colors. You want a white point of um, D65 white point um, and you set it up just like a, uh, like a projection system like you used to, um, the digital projection system. So you start with that, um, and then you go backwards to the camera. Yeah, and there's a bunch of math that probably only Cedric understands. <laughs> he missed the joke. <laughs> uh, Okay, um, the other thing is you wanna make sure that your calibration you know, is correct, um, that you compare everything, um, that everything is um, linearized, uh, the uh, color space settings um, uh, in Unreal and, uh, and in the camera, um, everything should run in either uh, you know, log C wide gamut or in um, uh, the, uh, the airy uh, log color space which is airy wide gamut. Ugh. Okay, this is another great one um, that uh, I came from. So this is, um, this is Sony's new tool um, that uh, you know, basically does all the things that I, you know, that I just talked about. Um, they have a camera display plugin. Um, you shoot the Macbeth chart, um, and then it takes the camera, and then the software compares the chart on the, um, on the LED volume to, um, to how it, it's coming out of the camera. See, I'll have this down by the time, oh, by the time, wow, I'm done. All right, I wanna show this link. All right, we'll go with this. I'll send you this, <laughs> send you the slide, but the, the Sony chart is, is pretty cool. You know, like I said, you know, you kind of get it from the software. Um, so this is a combination of uh, image from the um, virtual production guide by uh, Noah Kadner. Uh, Noah Kadner um, does a lot of podcasts and things like that, and he's really great 
every week is something, is something new, so I'd definitely um, follow him. So it starts out at the top, the pre-production, virtual de art department, visualization, and um, all those guys are working off the uh, REC 2020 monitors um, at 4K. So I've taken some seminars and things like that, but nobody's really talked about working in 20, uh, REC 2020. So, um, you know, up there, your working color space is ACES CG. The output is um, PQ to the Brompton um, processors. Everybody's working in uh, 4K at REC 709. Um, your color spaces on your camera um, for ARRI, um, it's log C wide gamut. For Sony, it's uh, Sony S-Log. And then for the volume, and like nobody really commits to this. Everybody says it could be 300, you know, it could be 800. So I took a stand last night that said, I'm gonna put a, a slide together. Um, D65 white point and um, 1500 nits. Um, that range is the brightness of the uh, volume. Um, and that range could be a uh, thousand nits to um, 1500. Um, one of the color classes I took, the guy was saying 300. And I was just like, uh, he didn't really get it. Um, so the other parts of the pipeline, editorial, post-production, final delivery, they're all working in uh, Rec 2020. Okay, here's another uh, great asset is the Netflix partner program. So this is another diagram. Um, you see up there, it starts with the camera, goes through um, color management, um, you know, through asset uh, color creation. You know, if you stay in um, ACES CG, you may not need to do, you know, all of those things. And then, um, then you encode your media clip files. Um, what kind of, um, I've got a question for you in the front row. What kind of playback um, have you been using in the, in the clip files? Are they using, uh, um, are they using OpenEXR or the um, ProRes 422, ProRes 444? Yeah, I've had, Everybody, it's yeah. It seems to be the the house chooses the color or the uh, the, the file format. Um, you know, coming from visual effects and color. You know, I like Open EXR, but then you need a hefty machine to play it back. And that's one of the things that um, that you really need in virtual production is you need hefty machines. You know, all around. You know, I, I should have. Um, when Autodesk decided to uh, commit to NVIDIA cards and Apple decided to go, go away from NVIDIA cards, should have bought app, app, um, NVIDIA stock then, you know, 2007. Because all those, all those, the AMD stock is going crazy. Um, I mean, they just, keep, they just keep winning. You know, they had the, uh, the uh, Bitcoin miners and now the, the AI chips and the stock just keeps going up. So this is a lot where the action happens too. Um, on set, at the camera, DIT uh, cart, um, on set monitor is in uh, Rec 2020. There's everybody by the cart. Um, then you go into um, the post-production with the colorists. Um, you've got the dailies, goes to VFX, they do to the DI, and then it goes wherever. Um, you know, it goes. I thought I had one more slide. Um, so anyways, the, uh, where am I at for time? Am I good? Okay. Um, so some of the key insights, uh, understanding color spaces is vital. Um, you know, hopefully this presentation gave you a little bit more of a commitment of some ideas that you know, at least that I've used in the past on some of the newer volumes. Um, there's some companies like View that um, has the View One um, with their own system. Um, I really like the Sony 
and the Airy um, system because it's, uh, especially Sony, it's a, um, you know, it's kind of a package deal. You get a um, Sony volume, Sony camera, and you know, that stuff is, you know, just really good. Um, you wanna make sure that your um, artistic, um, that your artists have good color space management, technical integration, and um, it's an environment where everything's consistent. The first thing that goes wrong um, for a colorist is if the DP loses confidence in you, um, then everything kind of spirals from there because then they don't trust you and things like that. Um, and they question, you know, it's like, did you change it? And then they're not sure if you say yes or no, uh, to, you know, to act, if you say yes or no to believe you. Um, there's gonna be continuous advancements um, in the technologies and um, uh, as the color spaces continue uh, to evolve. I think there's, um, Cedric will know, there's ACES 3 coming out, ACES 2, yeah. But that um, NAB's next week, I think, in Vegas. So that's kind of where everybody comes out with their new software. Unreal will have a, you know, 5.4. Um, the Scratch guys are coming up with some, uh, Assimilate is coming up with some new stuff. And uh, who else? Everybody, you know, are you going to NAB? No? Yeah. So, um, so any questions? Um, you know, we can go back to one of the slides if you want. Um, any questions about the commitment to Rec 2020, um, or have you been working in Rec 709, or um, you know, any clarifications on anything? All good. Well, thank you very much. Um, sorry for a little bit of the rocky start um, on there. Um, I'm definitely going to take a, uh, a cue from you and use more. I like the graph. The graph stuff was really good. All the words, you know. But I redid the whole presentation last night, so <laughs> it's uh, kind of a, uh, there you go. All right, thank you. Thank you.